It's the Hip Hop Matrix Show. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. It's the Hip Hop Matrix Show with Jay Hall and DJ Academics. All I'm offering is the truth. Nothing more. Let's get it. Yeah. The Hip Hop Matrix Show. Myself, Jay Hall. This brother right here, DJ Academics. What's good, my brother? What's happening, homie? How you been? How you been, bro? I've been fine. I'm still here, kicking and scratching. Yeah. Moving around. How late, come I feel like I'm still alive? How come I feel like every time we take a little second, it feels like a very long time? But it's only been two weeks. Yeah, because so much BS go on in between. Yeah. I mean, who who had to take off first? Me or you? Me, uh, right? I'm just gonna blame you. Oh, I did. I'm gonna I'm gonna take that because it was homecoming. Yeah. Howard University homecoming, the greatest homecoming land. I am still trying to recover from that. <laughs> I'm still trying to recover. It was all right. It was all right. Whatever. Whatever. Right. Why you ain't come out? You supposed to holler at me. Because you ain't answer the phone, man. I called you back. I called you back. You was, you know, I called you back, bro. Of course, I'm not going to answer the phone at that first ring. I'm out there. Uh, I'm out there. You ain't called me back. No, I did call you back, man. That's for real. I did call you back. We had a blast. We, we had a blast. I'm still, I'm looking at pictures. I get tagged on IG right now. And I'm like, when, when was I there? I have no idea. <laughs> like it's like it was a picture of me at the casino. I'm like, when, when was I at the casino? I have no idea. I was at the casino. Don't even remember going to. The Don't casino. even remember how I got way out to the casino. Like the, the casino is nowhere near Howard University. How was I at the casino? What was I doing? I had no money. What was I gambling with? Yeah, I have no idea. But it was an amazing time. It's always a great time. And shout out to everybody who's not even a Howard University alumni, but you still You'll came out. You'll find out what you was gambling with when your next bank statement comes. <laughs> boy, you ain't never lie. Actually, I didn't find out. Some of my bills that didn't get paid found out. Oh, all right. So, you know, that's that's how that worked out. And then the second week, you were caught up in some stuff, right? You was um doing some spots up in your hometown, right? Yeah, I had um some parties going on. Did a high, couple high school parties. You, you play play for the kids. I was gonna say, how, how was that doing a high school party? Like as you get older, is it harder to like do a high school party? Uh, like to feel that connection because I talked to somebody who we both know, and she told me she's completely done with high school parties. Like she's disconnected. A DJ. You just feel disconnected. She said she's a, done. She said you, she can't do it no more. She yeah, said the last yeah. one she did was a struggle. Yeah, okay, you can get like that because you can get out of touch because the way they the way they listen to music is different. They're straight YouTube. Yeah. So they have their own, and Baltimore is different because Baltimore has its own scene now. And the high school kids in Baltimore only want to hear music from Baltimore. I, I st- I'm starting to feel that's the way it is all around because, you know, I worked out of school, and the first time, it was my first time working at school because, you know, I always work with kids and group homes and things of that nature. So when I'm first time working at school, it was my first time at a, at a school dance. Mm-hmm. And the DJ was, you can tell, he came prepared to, like, mix and do his thing. He had to just go straight to YouTube because the kids kept making requests that even he didn't know. And I knew the dude. Mm-hmm. He wasn't no lack, you know, he wasn't no slacking DJ. But he had to get to the point, he had to just be like, all right, what y'all want to hear next? Oh, okay. Like, he had to go to straight YouTube and just play what they wanted to hear in a sense. And I'm like, yo, and everybody, like you said, wanted to hear their own scene. And it's to the point where even with in, inside of a city, certain sections of the city want to hear their own scene. Mm-hmm. So, like, a West Side kid ain't listening to the same thing like an East Side kid is listening to. And they go off to it. They really party to it, too. Yeah, they were rocking with it. So are you find yourself? They support it. Are you going to find yourself one day, like, not doing high school parties no more? Are you, uh, are you feel like you're along that line? I mean, I'm along that line, but at, when I'm doing it, I actually like it because it keeps me in touch and keeps me, you know, my hand on the culture and what's going on. Okay. It keeps me in the know. Okay. So I like it from that standpoint. But there is other ways of being in the know, though. You don't have to do high school parties to be in the know. But that's one of the ways, I yeah, guess you would say. but that's the most organic way. That's in the, you in it. You in the culture. You so you ain't there yet, pretty you much. See the re- you see the results. No, okay. I, I ain't quite there yet. Our mutual friend, she said she done. Okay. <laughs> she said the last one was a struggle. I think she said she gave the rest of the time to like a little homie or something to play the music. She said it was <laughs> She said it was, it was bad. She said she she felt guilty for almost getting paid because she uh, was like, it, she felt bad. Still took that check, though. Oh, you still gonna take? I take check. I play. <laughs> Listen, if high school parties are getting to that point, where all you gotta do is play YouTube. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm, I respect the crab. You know, I respect what you do. But you gonna be? I'm gonna DJ take that Jay check. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna plug in my YouTube. We gonna go at it. You understand? So, you know, that's what we doing. Welcome. It's the Hip Hop Make the Show. All right. What's 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 next? What's first up? Uh, first up. Okay. I don't know if you caught this, but this has happened recently. Shots were reported fired on a video set with Takashi Six Nine. Kanye West and Nicki Minaj. An emergency dispatch has stated that multiple shots were fired. Nothing has been reported yet if someone has been injured. 
But the big question that is on everyone's mind is, who you think the shots were for? Kanye West, Nicki Minaj, or Takashi 6 9 Probably Takashi, stupid ass. Why you, say, you see he put up the IG video of him dancing with the security? Yeah, like he really does. Down. He really does take everything as a joke. Yeah, it's simple ass. Yeah, well, hold on, though. What if it was about Kanye? You know, his recent moves with Trump, people ain't too happy about that. He got blamed for the the Blackxit situation and all that stuff. No, nah, ain't nobody shooting at Kanye yet. <laughs> I do find that weird that as angry as we have, we haven't want to shoot him yet. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying we should, but Kanye, no one. you mad at Kanye. You want to just slap shit out of him. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Your, you tell him to go sit his dumb ass down somewhere. It's like a relative who gets too drunk at a party. Yeah, you don't want you don't want to kill him, though. You don't, yeah. don't want to really hurt him. So who would Takashi be you like? You want to smack some sense into him, but you don't want to really hurt him, though. Who would Takashi be like, then? If Kanye's a relative of a party, then who's Takashi? Takashi is like, who is this guy? He's like... I'm going to tell you what I see. He's like the younger brother who has seven older brothers that are gangsters. Mm-hmm. And, but he had the loudest mouth <sighs> and would hit you and you know one of them were coming. So you had to prepare to fight more than one person when you that's, were coming up. That's basically him and his security. That's, that's what Takashi reminds me of. I, that's just what he reminds me of. I mean, he takes everything as a joke. Nothing to him is serious. If you are angry at him, you are wasting your time and your energy. Period. That's just what it is when it comes to him. But what if, you know, Nikki been having a little beef lately? Beef with Cardi? You think those shots might have been for her? I'm just saying. Some, like, overzealous fan upset saw Nikki, saw that ass, and was like, pop, 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 pop. Uh, ain't nobody shooting Nikki. Either. Nah, ain't nobody shooting that Nikki. Nikki and Cardi both talked that boss stuff, but they both are very clear to the fact that they are done with their life, and uh-huh. that's why they are just spitting bars at each other over the microphone. Oh, no, 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 no. What? It will get ugly. I got Cardi still. Still face to so? face in the same arena. Look at me the wrong way. I got Cardi going off from zero to 100. So you you saying Cardi ain't, she's not far removed yet. Nikki's no, she, far removed, but Cardi's not. Yeah, Nikki's, Nikki's very far removed. Cardi, nah, she ain't, she ain't, she ain't, they ain't done with her yet. That's real. <laughs> That's real. That's real. That's real. Yeah, her PR people ain't finished with her yet. They, they still got some training to do. Yeah, they still got some training to do <laughs> with the do's and don'ts. Like, she's still willing to pop off at any given moment. Yeah, she probably has to travel like with her lawyer. Yeah. Like, as a matter of fact, I don't think I say anything too slick to Cardi. Like, I'm I'm more concerned about Cardi jumping off on me than her actual husband. Uh, personally, you know what I mean? Because I think Cardi actually handled me herself versus mm-hmm. other rappers, they security and all of that. You you never you never see male rappers really fight each other's they security. But Cardi saying she bought that life. Like, she come get you herself. And she wanted Nikki. She definitely wanted Nikki. She wanted Nikki that, at that moment. And Nikki did not want to, she didn't want no smoke. Hey, listen, when you making money like that, you don't want, I don't, I don't blame Nikki. I'm right here. I've said the same thing. I'm standing right. I wouldn't have ran, but I wouldn't have moved forward. Just saying. <laughs> I wouldn't have ran, but I wouldn't have moved forward. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, and um, water is wet news. Your guy, Young Thug, failed a drug test, and he's now in jail. Now, he was already out on bond because I don't know if you remember this or heard about this, but he was arrested for multiple drugs after a stop back in 2017. Since then, he has been hit with eight felonies. And so recently, when he had to do a drug test for the judge, he failed it. So the judge sent him to jail. So Young Thug is in jail. Uh, you lights think- up! Boxing! <laughs> you know, the part of red light. So here's the question: You think Young Thug is in jail with his dress? Oh, if he is, oh man, I'm just asking. He gonna be singing some high notes tonight. This is my best friend. This is my best friend. This is my best friend. in there with no dress on, man. They wouldn't allow that. Okay, but there's some dudes that definitely saw him in that dress, and they probably got pictures on the wall of him in that dress. He's in jail. He's not in prison. That jail can be worse. Ain't no, they not regulating in there. They throwing you all in, in that one big old sum, in that one big room. The big holding cell. Yeah. Bro. So he's be, young thug. He will be in his own cell. Before the paperwork even get processed, they throwing everybody in there. So you got the dude that just nah. killed five people in there with the drunk driver. They not gonna put him in there. Okay. Right, so they are not gonna put him in there with everybody. Trust you think me. so? They gonna make it special for him? Yep. Okay. All right. I'm just saying. Yo, you never know, though. Thugger might go in there and be comfortable in jail, though. And not want to come out? Yeah, he may go in there and be at home. Maybe fine. Maybe straight. He may come out like, you know, what's up? That was a vacation. <laughs> it was popping. You sent me to the Playboy Mansion. 
I'm not seeing that. I'm just saying. You never know, man. You you never know is what I'm saying. Everybody don't have that fear of going to jail like the way the rest of us did. Everybody didn't grow up. You know, he young. He ain't grew up watching Oz. I grew up watching Oz. I was petrified of jail. I ain't want no parts of jail. I wouldn't touch no kind of drug narcotic. All right, let's talk some new music, all right? Vince Staples released FM. I know you listen to that. That's your guy, right? Yeah, that's my guy, man. But this, I, I listen to it. I, I don't really know where Vince been at ever since his first album. He's just been different. He's been going left. I applaud him trying to do something different. It just hasn't really stuck with me personally, but I'm pretty sure sticking with somebody. He has been more experimental, like, as far as, as an artist go. But I guess the first one was so hard. I guess I just wanted some more of that, but this one just sound kind of like, you know, it sound like a radio station, but it's, it just sound real loose. It don't sound structured. You got a chance to hear it? No, I didn't. I didn't hear it. Yeah, I, you know, that's just my thing. What I did hear though is T Grizzly still my moment out of the three hundred camp. So three one three. Yeah, they got some movement going for this fourth quarter, trying to keep up with, you know. QC, who's just demolishing everything. Do you think that T Grizzly can even recapture, you know, um, first day out, that kind of momentum that he had? Because it doesn't seem like it. And although he's been putting out some dope records, they haven't seen that they've been sticking. Yeah, he's not going to top that record, but he he's putting out some decent records. He's gonna he's gonna be all right. Grizzly's gonna be all right. It did seem like for a while his records were all kind of sounding like first day out, like he wanted to catch that. You know what I mean? They all had that same kind of like build up. It. Just like Cardi B ain't never going to catch Bodak. Yeah, but she's had other songs, though, that we recognize her for. T. Grizzly's songs don't seem to stick, you know what I mean, to the masses. Cardi got singles that are hit records. I'm just saying Grizzly Very true. hasn't had anything that really, like, stuck. And I, I think he's a dope artist. I'm just saying I wonder what's the disconnect. I have no idea. I don't, I mean... He got some right. He'll be all right. Like I said, Grizzly be all right. You Grizzly, know I'm rooting for him. Grizzly will be That's all right. Uh, so, Trippy Red, a love letter to you. Only thing I know about Trippy Red is that he hates Takashi 6 9 like everybody else. Yeah. That's the only thing I really know about the dude. And one thing you do know, Meek's almost back. Oh, About yeah, to drop yeah. the end of November. Potentially dropping the album, too. And so not an EP, not not four different e- four song EPs. He's dropping the album in November. I'm going to go on record, and I'm going to tell you, I think this is Meek Mill's most important record to date. This is important. Most one? important record to date. When Even Meek the dropped this album. Where we forget about the album in two weeks. That's why I'm saying it's important. <laughs> because with the momentum that Meek has had and people rallying in for him and where he's come from, you know, from losing the battle with Drake and then going to jail and facing against the you court system. You got to throw that in there too. No, you got to throw that in there. I mean, he took a lot of, you know, he took a lot of L's, you know, losing Nicki and all this other stuff, you know. But then coming out and having people behind him again, this album that he dropped is going to determine which way his career go. And he's been doing a nice path of dropping little songs. He rebuilt his relationship with Drake. You know, I'm pretty sure he's back in Nikki's DMs. I don't know. You know what I mean? I would be. You never but, left those. Right, right, right. And so this album right now, everyone got their eye on him. They're looking for him to be that guy to also talk about issues that he's not known for talking about. You know what I mean? Like going deep about some political stuff from a street perspective. So this is going to be his most important album that we are looking forward to. If he dropped the ball on this, I don't see it coming back. He ain't dropping the ball. He got it. Going down, and my movie Creed 2 is coming out. So, <laughs> oh, you think he's gonna be on that soundtrack? Oh, yeah, P- police. Yeah, uh, drop a fire when you're gonna be on album, Creed 2. I'm telling you, his album is gonna be all over that movie. I'm just telling y'all right now. You think so? He got at least four songs off his album in that movie soundtrack already. Yeah, and that's a bigger situation right there because you know, Creed that had to kind of, unless you were a Rocky fan for a long time, you ain't know what Creed was. So, Creed was actually an introduction to a lot of people, but everybody's anticipating Creed 2. Yeah, well, so, what was the introduction to me? No, no, not to me either. But you follow what I'm saying. So with this new Creed coming out, I'm hoping you're right. I'm hoping he does have, a, like, if not four songs, that one good one mm-hmm. that we all going to be rocking with. And if Creed is a smash the way we hope it is, yo, it's the sky's the limit for me. Yeah. Or he can drop uh, the ball. It's going to be Meek Mill all through that movie, just so you know. He might even have, He might even be in the movie. You never know. I hope so. As long as he don't get punched like the way your last man did. Oh, Tone Trump. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know. Well, I mean, Tone was on our show. He a good guy. He said he he said, you know, he was acting. You know what I mean? But, you know. Well, we don't want to see that from Meek, though. Nah. Nah. That wouldn't be a good look. All right. Well, in other news, Dipset did a reunion. That's right. They dropped the song Sauce Boys. 
They even put the video out and everything. But unfortunately, everybody online is only talking about Joel Santana. Nope, they're not talking about the bars. Missing Apparently, election. missing M-I-A. teeth. His missing teeth. Apparently, when you go to the 1 minute and 58 mark in the video, Sauce Boys, you can see some little missing grill. And that's all everybody is talking about. And apparently, people thinking it's affecting this flow. You think things like this Game is why. Game a little lisp. But see, this is why. A little whistle. This is why. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be 100 with you. This is why I don't like certain reunions. Because we're in an era now where a little small distraction like that that didn't matter in the early 2000s. It messes everything it up. It messes everything up now. Like, we're supposed to be happy that Dipset is back together. We got a record with Jules, Jim Jones, and Cameron, even Freaky Zicky's in the video. You know how long it took for Dancing. us to get all of them in one setting? You know how long if you were a Dipset fan, you waited for that? And it's going to get distracted because Jules decided to leave his teeth at home? <laughs> I'm just saying, man. Like, this, this is why I can't stand about this era, man. You take one small thing, one little mistake, one little glimpse, man, and we... We don't know how to let it go. We go on it. I log on my Twitter, and I'm seeing Jewel Santana. I, first of all, you know, when you see somebody trending, you know, the first thing you worry about is, is they dead. And then I go on there, and everyone's just talking about his teeth. His memes popping up and everything. So you think it's even possible for them to move past something like that and, and like, still, like, be able to stick it to the music? Or is it going to be downhill from there? No, nah, I think they'll stick past it. Just going, that's just going to fly past. So they put out some good music. That's all that matters. Yeah, I guess you got a point. The most important thing, I guess I'm just used to Dipset going away because Jim and Cam fight, yeah, well, not because not of missing teeth. Yeah, they're not fighting now, so they good. That'd be all right. Okay. Is it low-key, though, we need to be honest. This is like the third Dipset reunion cause, or the fifth one because I swear them, them brothers argue with each other every other day. So <laughs> let's, just, let's just enjoy it. My point is can we just enjoy this reunion while it's here before Jim goes on a rant and – Cam goes on a rant and we don't see this no more. Can we just enjoy this reunion? Yeah, they definitely going to be arguing in the car. Exactly. I don't know if you caught this. I'm reading my show prep. But 50 Cent, he shared a document of Jimmy Henchman. Uh, you might want to remember Jimmy Henchman. He was the game's former manager. And allegedly the guy who got Pac shot at Quad Studios. Legendary street dude, you know, been alleged to some things. Well, apparently he's been sentenced for life for allegedly killing a 50 Cent associate. And 50 is making all types of trolling fun on IG about that. As usual, I got to ask, has 50 went too far? What is too far? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you put up the dude's sentencing document on public, and you're laughing at it. I mean, he, uh, he called him Jimmy the Rat, so. If Jimmy snitched, that's a bad deal. If you snitch and you got life, that's a, you're supposed to snitch and get out like what four or five years, right? Or was he facing death or something like that? I mean, it depends. I don't know. It could be he could you could snitch and save your mom or save your save your brother. Or something I ain't like think that. about that. Say to, you can lessen other people's charges. I right? ain't think about that. That's real. That's real. Depending on who all got arrested, right? Yeah. And I don't know too much about the case to to not say somebody else didn't get arrested. So that's real. I'm just saying the fact if you snitch and you still doing 25, man, either it's something like the way you just mentioned. Boy, that was a horrible DA deal because they ain't had to go down as law and order. <laughs> <laughs> or criminal minds. Right. You watch that. They be like, it don't even be 24 hours. They be like, I want to make a deal. Yeah, let's make a deal. You killed 10 people. I'm out in six months. Everybody else did it. Yep, he did it. He, he, he embezzles money from here and he puts it over here. He washes it there. Yo, the most stand-up dude ever on TV was my man. I can't remember his name right now from The Wire. Remember, he was in there eating, like, the Chinese food, and he was taking bodies. He was like, yeah, there's a dude in Philly. You might want to find him. They was like, you wasn't even there yet. He was like, I'll give you a couple more bodies for horse rad- for, for some radish. And he was just eating food. It was mm-hmm. um, Barksdale, right-hand man, the shooter dude. Remember, he ended up in jail. His son was soft. Mm-hmm. I can't remember his name. You know, we Weebay. We Weebay. We we Weebay was just taking bodies. Like, he didn't even care. He was like, yeah, I do it down there in Boston. There's a couple, couple three people. Go up the graveyard, dig up a couple more. Like, you like, damn, we, babe. You ain't having that no more. Now it was the reverse. You bring me some McDonald's. Yeah, DJ Academics was actually there. He was lined up. He was park center. He walked three feet close to the man. Right. The gun that he's carrying and his um Snitch on me for some McDonald's. This is his dental hygiene right here. And I also got his credit card information That's if you need. Show me. over. I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm just saying, man, it don't take much no more. It don't, it, they not building them no more like that used to. They, it don't take much no more. So I don't know, man. You know. I guess 
if Jimmy's a rat, you know, hopefully I don't I don't want to say it's not true because I don't know nothing about Jimmy Hitchman, so don't give me the line. And it's something about when you talk about that whole situation with Pac, I just get bad vibes about. Because everybody who was allegedly involved with that, it just doesn't feel right when you talk about it. Like, even that part in the movie when they were talking about King Tut, like, I was like, uh, I just didn't want to, you know. It's something about Pac's situation that's just a little bit too mysterious for me. And everybody walking around knowing who did it, I just don't feel comfortable personally. Because I'm, I'm going to take it back one time. Me and this dude was in a bar, and we was talking about it. And we was talking about when Pac used to rap about the dude Haitian Jack, mm -hmm. right? Now, I, I don't know who Haitian Jack is. I'm, I'm from Detroit. I didn't grow up hearing about who Haitian Jack is. We just, I'm just quoting it, right? Some dude from the other side of the bar, I guess apparently read our lips and heard the conversation. He walked over there. He's like, yeah, so y'all know Jack? I was like, what? He said, yeah, y'all know Jack? I told my man, hey, dog, I'm done, dog. I ain't never talking about this issue ever again, dog. <laughs> I'm done, dog. <laughs> I don't know that guy. Everybody's scattered around. I, dude, I ain't never even been in this bar before. You know what I'm saying? Like, and me and you wasn't even talking loud. And this dude came from way on the side from the bathroom and going to ask us about some dude who I never met. Don't even know how he look. Nah, I'm good, man. Park is gone. Guy well, rest his hair. Well, ask us about a drug dealer from the 90s. Dog, mm -hmm. you know, rest in peace to man, Tupac Shakur, man. But I ain't trying to join no time soon. You know what I'm saying? Like, I... I I don't want no parts of this stuff, man. So it's something about the Tupac situation. I mean, with Jimmy Hitchman, man, when people mention it, it just always has made me feel extremely uncomfortable. Actually, more uncomfortable than Biggie. You know what I mean? Because I guess with Biggie, we just always blame the NYPD and, you know, something about that. But with NYPD, Pop, Biggie down in L.A. That's what I'm saying. I mean, well, I'm sorry, L LAPD. We always kind of look at that situation as dirty cops. And, and I guess everybody always blamed Suge, and it was always kind of a little bit different. Yeah, but, a blood thing. Yeah, but with Pac, it was never like one particular guy we could really, really blame. Well, that situation was when he just got shot. He lived through that situation. Okay. So he, that's not when he actually died. Pac actually died in Vegas. Okay, I, I'm just uncomfortable. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm just, <laughs> I just, I just, I'm uncomfortable about it now. But we, we can definitely move on. You know what I'm saying? I'm definitely uncomfortable about it now. So I guess 50 Cent ain't going to never... Um, you don't give up. Okay. Speaking of your boy 50 Cent, as we were just talking about him going too far, he kind of reunited, I mean, um, re-energized. Re-ignited. Re reignited, thank you. The beef with Mr. him. college graduate. Him and this guy, Ja Rule. I don't know if you saw it, but he had put up a picture of Ja Rule. I guess he was dressed like a pimp for Halloween or whatever. And he said some stuff, and then Ja just wrote on the comic section, pull up. And then 50 Cent had responded, quote, soft side rules apply. It never over. We may take a break, but it ain't over till one of us is gone. Get the strap, unquote. Is there ever going to be a time when these two are going to be done? Nah. But I think at this point it benefits Ja Rule more than it benefits 50. I saw. I never the heard first, that first, before. First go around, it benefited 50 more because Ja Rule had the juice. Okay. And 50 wanted it. Now, 50 is more relevant than Ja Rule. Okay. So then Ja Rule going back and forth with 50 makes him relevant. So. I will say this real quick. Shout out to Ja Rule because he's been doing this thing two years in a row. I've been watching on Instagram from Lisa Evers, who does the Street Soldier thing out in New York. And forgive me if I um, don't have all the evidence, but I follow her on IG. And Ja Rule has been a part of an organization or a protest of trying to get schools clean water. And um, I guess they got like some of the schools got like bugs or something in New York. But he, he's been part of that protest. It's like his second year. He's been actually been active in it. So shout out to him on that. But he might want to leave 50 alone. Because I don't think them two ever going to be over this situation. But I don't think 50 is going to actually fight you like he did 15 years ago. Nah, uh, he, he want to, he, he's want to, he want to does it more strategically now. But I mean, Ja ain't scared of him. I mean, Ja, I seen Ja when I was, New York, when I was in New York. Um, couple months ago. I actually seen him in New York. Believe him. He was coming in the club as I was leaving out. I seen him. But yeah, Ja's, ja's in shape. Like, he ready. Well, I'll say this. Ja looks like he can take 50 now than he did 15 years ago. Yeah. Back then, it didn't look like no contest at all he on, on paper. He actually stabbed 50 back in the day. That's true. Yeah. Well, he didn't. Yeah, he Black did. Child, no, Black Child said he did. Black Child said he did. He can talk about it because he said the paper is over with. Because remember, that was a whole, he said, Black Child claimed that when they cut the lights off, he would just poke him. And he allegedly, you know, he somehow 50 Cent got poked. But mm -hmm. when they all was fighting. But you're right. 50 got stabbed. The point is 50 did get stabbed. Hell, 50 got shot. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, 50 got shot. Very true. So, you know, I guess the chances of them actually being done with this is what? None? Well, I mean, Jai had nothing to do with him getting shot, though. 
If you fifty cent, do you believe that? They wasn't you, even beefing back then. Yes, they was. Oh, he got shot way before that. He got shot with his first deal when he was still signed to Jam Master J. He got shot after How to Rob. He had put out How to Rob, and Fifty Cent got shot five times after How to Rob. He got shot nine times, but nine five multiple times. Yeah, after How to Rob, him and Ja did have a problem during that era. Yeah, they had a problem then too. That was before the beef. No, yeah, it was before we knew of the beef. They had an issue. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell you. They had an issue. My point is, Fifty got shot in the mess. I don't know who. I don't know who shot who. Like we just talked about earlier about the whole thing with Tupac. <laughs> like I feel the same thing about Fifty. Like I don't like talking about that too much either. Fifty Cent makes it comical now, and he makes it a little bit more talking. You know, we we can talk about it, but that was still very heavy back then when they was into everything that was going on in New York. And I think with Ja, there's still a sore spot with him because he lost a lot in the sense of in the public eye, you know? Yeah, he was the man. He was a rock star. Yeah. I mean, all listen, all celebrities only have a short amount of time where they can really be that 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 hot person. But Jaws flame kind of ended a little bit early because of 50. It was like it didn't fade out. It was just a cold stop. <laughs> yeah. And 50 Rain was so huge. Yeah. He came out and started setting records, 10 yeah. million records, 11 million records. Anytime somebody accused you of doing something, then they come out and do the exact same thing. Like he accused you of singing too much on records, and he came out and he did the exact same thing. Twenty one questions, and then you know what I'm saying, and then but and and people were accepting it from him, but looking at you like you a sucker, yeah. Well, the thing is, is what you don't want is nobody to get hurt. I guess honestly, but maybe at this point they both should just put on the gloves, man, and, and box for charity. You think that's a chance for that? Nah, that ain't gonna happen. I mean, I would like, I would love to see, it, especially if they did the UFC. That would be great. I mean, Fifty said this ain't gonna done. This ain't gonna be done till one of us is dead. I mean, that's that's at this point their beef is old enough to drink. That's how long they've been beefing. They've been beefing like twenty years. They beef is almost. They beef can go fight in the war. <laughs> they beef can vote in the midterm elections. They can vote. <laughs> All right, this, 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 this is this is this is. They're gonna be in wheelchairs hitting each other's with cane. So I don't know, man. Just just saying, Fifty's never gonna go too far, and he's he seems to never ever be over anything. Whether you Jimmy Henchman or whether you Ja Rule or whether you the third grade teacher that gave him F, he probably looking for her too. Mm-hmm. All right, well, moving on. You got Snoop Dogg. You know he was in DC recently. Did you check that out? Yeah, walking around with um with a Hampton no, sweatshirt on. Right? No, don't you dare. He had the Howard the Howard University sweater on. He was on campus. He was rocking out. That's right. Although he was like a week late though. He should have came out during homecoming, but it is what it is. He went to the White House, too. And rolled a blunt. I guess so. <laughs> he also announced that he's working on a Netflix kind of bio series with Ryan Coogler and um, Lee Daniels. Oh, wow. Because he doesn't feel like his story can be told in two hours, like in a movie. Which I agree. I think that was the only complaint people had with the NWA movie was that it was too short. And the movie was damn near three hours. Yeah. Well, I mean, Snoop did outlive everybody. That's true. That's true. That's true. You think people would be heated? Like, what would you like to see in the Snoop Dogg? Like, what era of Snoop? Because there's been so many eras of Snoop. He's worn so many different hats. He's been around a very long time now. What era of Snoop are you most interested in if they do the series? Like, what segment part would you be more interested in? I mean, of course, everybody wants to see the Death Row Snoop. You think so? Everybody still? Wants, yeah, of course you want to see Death Row Snoop. Okay. Like, even now, like, you think that's still, like, something people still are interested in? Because we seem like we hear this story... So much. You think we're not tired of that part? No. Yeah, you're right. I'm just asking. I'm just trying. I, I want to see that part too. It's, it's, never, <laughs> it's never going to get old. Like, like that, I definitely want to see when he first met, when he first came to the studio and they were all Crips and he came to the studio and it was all bloods there. Like, I definitely want to see that interaction. Like, yeah, that, that, that three, four year span of death row and they were just juggernauts. That's like, that's like the mystique and the intrigue and the legendary legacy of that time. I don't know, it's just one of those stories you'll never get tired of hearing. I didn't even realize until Corrupt said in an interview recently that Death Row demise really kind of imploded because they really were Bloods and Crips mm-hmm. trying to work together. And there was definitely some tension there. And I didn't it didn't even it never occurred to me coming up that that's what it was. In the middle of the nineties. Cause right, you got the dog pile, who they were, you got Sugar, his crew. 
who they were. All bloods. And then y'all meeting in the studio. Y'all just coming in and out. Ain't no office hours. Ain't nobody signed on sign up sheet like, okay, the bloods got the um studio from nine to one. The Crips got the studio from <laughs> one to six. Like it's not going down like that. It was a legit like in and out. Like I'm trying to really understand. Remember Nate Dogg said he, it was never a day where he walked in the Death Row Studios without his gun. Yeah. The late great Nate Dogg. Nate, late great Nate Dogg. God bless the dead. Yeah, that's true. And also, Corrupt said that that whole situation with Dr. Dre, like in the movie, when Dr. Dre beat that dude up and still, he said that was real. He said Dre really didn't play that when it came to his music. And I, I, you know, when people were saying like, man, they made Dre like he was gangster, like he was tough. I didn't really see that like a tough guy thing. I just thought it was as a stand-up dude, like, I ain't about to take no mess, especially when I know I got something going on. But Corrupt said, no, that was just, that was legit. So I could, can you imagine you walk in the studio one day and they got some dude on all fours begging, like, and repeating everything somebody is telling him to say? Mm. Like, can you imagine being in some, like, me and I had some really great music you still recording? Like, what is that? You better make some good music now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you going to be next. You know, that reminds me of hearing the story of, of when um, hip hop first started. OGs, you, you see documentaries, they say that a lot of drug dealers thought rappers were corny. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because they thought rappers were imitating the life that they were really trying to live. You know, and they, they didn't really take them seriously. But then in the 90s, that's when you really had drug dealers who were becoming rappers. And that's when the game, like, really, really changed. Because if you and I had beef and we were just shooting at each other on the block, just because you on MTV raps don't mean I'm done with this beef. I ain't mm -hmm. no rapper, but I still remember when you shot my cousin or you shot at me. So mm -hmm. the game started to come a little bit darker. And so you got the Bloods and the Crips and all these dudes from Long Beach, L.A. and all the other stuff. These dudes were just shooting at each other still. And then you come to the studio, you see the dude that jumped you and your man in that same studio. But he chilling with Suge. And you don't want no part of Suge. So what you do? Wait till you catch that fool outside. <laughs> Pretty much. Well, I think we know this. For, I think we mean you and both and I can agree is that if you're gonna make a Snoop Dogg doc, it has to be like HBO ish. I mean, or Netflix ish. It, it, please don't give us BET of Snoop Dogg. You don't think they did a good job with New Edition? They did a really good job with New Edition. I agree. And they did a better job with Bobby Brown than I thought they would. They did a really good job with Bobby Brown. But guess what? When it comes to Snoop, yeah, like, I gotta see that on Netflix or HBO. We, we, I gotta see that raw. Mm. I gotta see Snoop really getting it in, really getting it in. Way before he got in there with Martha Stewart. Like, yeah. I got to see Snoop when he was getting in with the Bloods and the Crips and he was loked out. You know what I mean? Something people forgot. Like, you know, remember Snoop faced a murder charge. We almost forget that, right? That was the case. When he baking biscuits with Martha Stewart, we forgot that that dude really faced a murder charge. Remember the infamous hands down prayer when they said not guilty with the ponytail slick back? Like, that was real. That was real. So I, I want to see that. I, wanna, I really do want to see that. So I really hope that get done. I'm not sure about Lee Daniels doing it. But Ryan Kruger, who did Black Panther, and who also did um, Creed. He did Creed. And what's the other one that Michael B. Jordan was in? Creed 2. <laughs> no, he didn't do Creed 2. The one doing. before that, though, when he played, you know, my man who, um, out in San Francisco, God forgive me, oh, man. Oh, Fruitvale. Fruitvale Station. You know what I mean? I can see Ryan Kruger doing it, but I don't know if he is into doing series, though. But I would love to see it. On a more happier note, we know we talking about gangsters and all that good stuff. Your OG gangster Rick Ross had a son. Him and a baby mom. What do you name him? He named him Billion. Now, people were clowning Rick Ross for this, but honestly, I think when you somebody like Rick Ross, that's a perfect name. That sounds so much like something Rick Ross would do. Billy. Name your son Billion. I mean, you think he went too far there? that? You think that's dumb or that's a setup? I mean... Something he should aspire to. I guess he's trying to breathe power onto his son and breathe, you know, the hustler, put the hustler in him, the huh, if he can, I guess. But I, I mean, that's true. I think you setting your son up, though, especially if he um go to school because he can't tell nobody he ain't got no money. They try to ask him to borrow money. Your name is Billion. Oh, he got some. He's going to have some money. I mean, you're going to have to forever have some money. You Ain't nobody ever going to believe you broke your name Billion. I don't care if we didn't know your if I don't know that Rick Ross is your daddy, your name Billion, I'm always gonna ask you for a dollar. <laughs> we go out to eat. I'm not looking, don't look at me when the bill comes. Oh, uh, girlfriends too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I ain't got it, baby. I ain't got it. Your name is Billion. Your yeah. man, yeah. That condom hole getting punched in. Your, this is Billion. Ain't nobody taking no plan B's. Mm. You know what I mean? So 
I mean, what 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 would you expect Rick Ross to name his son? Think about it. Like, what's the name Rick Ross else he could have named? He could have named him what? Um, Lemon Pepper? <laughs> yeah, how about name him Junior? Or name him, what's, his, what's Rick Ross's real name? You're about to say, because Rick Ross ain't his real name. can't call Rick Ross Junior. You already took someone else's name. Yeah, I was about to say, what's his name? Sheesh, I forgot. Alfonso or something? Yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> something, whatever, whatever, Junior. Name that. Yeah. Shout out to you, Ross, though, man. Having a son is a blessing. But naming them Billion, you setting them up, though. Some pressure. All right, let's talk some sports. Earlier this week, New Orleans Saints signed Des Bryant. And yeah. guess what? The last play of his second official practice with the team, he tears his damn Achilles. So he got signed on Monday, and then Friday night, news reports come out, he hurt his Achilles. Hurt his Achilles. They fear he's torn it, so he'd be definitely out for the season. He wouldn't be ready to train. He definitely confirmed year. on Twitter that it was part of God's plan. Yeah. And I'm not the Dez Bryant fan, but man, you got you have to feel something about that though. Yeah, I mean he he did secure a bag though, so he's still getting paid for the rest of the season now. Did he? I mean, because he only got I don't know. I think it was a game. It was a game to game contract, bro. I don't think he get no bread for deal. it. It was a year deal. I thought it was a game to game contract. No, I don't think it was a game to game contract. We can be wrong. I mean, yeah, we, it, I, it was a year deal or half a year deal. But um, they yeah. said they're not expecting him to even be well until like training Train, camp, yeah, training and he'll camp. be a free agent again at that point. You think is it? You think he's done? Like his career? No, nah, his career ain't done. He still got another go, but um, he definitely gonna have to nurse that injury. That's not one that you can just wake up and just hop back on the field now. It's your Achilles. That's your burst, your speed, your agility, your stop, your go. It's everything. If you your man Le'Veon Bell, are you looking at this situation and you saying nah? I'm just going to take the L, lose my money this year. Do you still come back like week, you know, like they say week eight or something like that? He has to come back or whatever the case may be? Oh, yeah, he's coming back because um, if he don't come back, he forfeits the whole year and he has to stay in Pittsburgh another year. Okay. So if he once he comes back, he can chill out the rest of the year and then he can be a free agent and go wherever he wants next year. So what, he can come back and just like, he ain't got to like practice or nothing, but he still got to play in the game though, right? I mean, he's, he got to come back, come back. He got to be back. He got to report and sign his franchise tender, which and he'll start making his salary of eight hundred and fifty-five grand a, a week. Okay, all right. That's 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 cool. But Dez Bryant. I mean, anybody does anybody sign him at this point? Yeah, he'll get signed. I'm, I was surprised he was he didn't get signed this long, but somebody will give him a go. Yeah. If he Somebody will give him a go. I think Jerry Jones has something to do with him not getting signed this year, though, personally. Yeah. I think Jerry Jones got on the phone. A lot of owners still rock with Jerry Jones. And I actually, think him and Jerry are actually cool, so I don't think that's the thing. And I think they got cool, and that's why he got signed. <laughs> so No, they were always cool. They never, like, was on the out. It wasn't Jerry that, that put them out. It was everybody else. It was the committee that – that's Jerry is the ultimate make decisions though, and we've known Jerry Jones to change his mind before. Remember that guy? What was his name? I don't know. Terrell Owens, and he told T.O. You're good. You're good. The next day, you're not good. See you in Buffalo. I mean, this has been Jerry Jones' history. He changes his mind. Wade Phillips, remember? Oh no, he's good. Next day, nah, I changed my mind. Well, I mean, this this is what Jerry Jones does. But yo, man, I I ain't wishing no. I'm not a Dez Bryant fan. Never have. But I I don't wish this on nobody. All right, well, let's do some celebrations, man. Early this week, actually, um, it was the anniversary, 25th anniversary of Wu-Tang Clan entered the 36 Chambers. Debuted 25 years ago, 1993. What's your favorite Wu memory? Uh, I mean, in between the ice cream video, uh, seeing all them Butter Pecan Ricans, and um, Bring the Pain video. Okay. I got I got a solid two, and they both include one person, the late, great, old, dirty bastard. My first one is when he interrupted the Grammys, and he was mad that Puffy won the Grammy over him, and he said, yo, Wu-Tang, we for the children. Wu-Tang is for the children. Mm-hmm. That's my favorite. My second one is when he took him, his kids, and his baby mom, and he went to go cash food stamps. He was like, it's free money from the government. It's free money. Yo, that was real. When he was on MTV and he went to go cash in his food stamps. Like, to me, that was that was the big deal to me. Like, that was hilarious to me. I did not know that dude was legit real like that. But that's my favorite Wu memory. But would you go down to say that Wu can be the greatest hip-hop group ever? Of course. 
Yeah. It goes without saying. As a group, I, I would say I think NWA had the biggest impact, but I think as a group. It's an argument. Yeah, I think as a and NWA didn't last long. They're the guns and roses of hip hop. They really didn't last long. They, their run was like, what, 19 months when you really think about it as far as holding it down and holding it together as a group. But when you talk when you talk about like as a group, Wu Tang, they were able to go solo, come back together, go solo, come back together. They did movies, they had their own language. I mean, dude, who the thought dudes yeah, with hoodies? Cartoons. Yeah, who the thought dudes with hoodies and Tims with um you know with ninja swords would be the ish? So Wu Tang was definitely definitely legit. Um, a second anniversary that came out is from my favorite group of all time is the Tribe Called Quest when they dropped. The classic Midnight Marauders. It came out 25 years ago this past week, also. So them and Wu Tang dropped on the same day 25 years ago. Can you imagine that? Sheesh, that was a nice day. I mean, we talk about people dropping around the same time now. We make it a big deal, but back then, you know what I mean? It was I mean, can you imagine Wu Tang and a Tri Card Quest? Those are two different hip hop heads going in there. Now, I was one of the few people who would buy both, but Tri Card Quest was definitely my favorite. And Midnight Marauders, when I think about that, my favorite songs off that hands down is a war tour because when they named Motown, yeah, I lost. I was crazy when I was a kid, mm. like straight up. And electric, re electric relaxation was definitely my joint. And um, oh my god, with Busta Rhymes, you know what I mean? Was 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 definitely that it. I, I don't think it'll ever be an album bigger or better than Midnight Marauders, as far as having that jazz feel but not being boring. You know, Fife was doing his thing. That's when Fife really stepped up and was on his mic. It was a dope man. So shout out to those two classic dope albums that came out in 1993. Would you say real quick, 1993 is probably a good year in hip hop, for like or, or the best year up there? I mean, it's a long time ago, but would you I'm think? I'm saying 96 is the best year ever. So why is that? I mean, you got All Eyes on Me, you got Fugees, you got Life at the Death, you got Life at the Death. Well, no, 97. 97. That was 97. You got Ready to Die. No, that was 95. That was 94. All right, 94, yeah, so I'm sorry. But you still got All Eyes on Me. You got the Fugees. You got Method Man. You got, um. there's a lot of records came out in 96. Well, I, I say Method Man was 95. I say 93. The reason why I'm saying 90, 93 can challenge that is because you had Snoop Dogg, Doggy Style, Midnight Marauders, Wu-Tang Clan, Tupac, um, Holly, if you hear me. You know, Strictly for My Niggas. So just that right there alone. That cluster is just phenomenal. But we have to do more research. We can return it. We can have a conversation all about that. All Eyes on Me is the greatest album of all time. Out of Tupac stuff? Out of, out of everybody's stuff. No, Me Against the World. If you were talking Tupac, Me Against I mean, he said Me Against the World is his favorite album, but it's I understand his how you album. feel. All Eyes on Me is the greatest album ever of all the man. <laughs> greatest of all time. Period. I'm going to let you finish, but All Eyes on Me is the greatest album ever made. Can any album of today compare to those yesterday? Any album? No. Like not not even one? Not no, even like a Kendrick I'm Lamar? Biased. I'm not even gonna not even gonna even associate with this conversation. Okay. I agree. I th I think we have a new era, but I don't think they can compare it. But I'm with you on that. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess there's really nothing really to get more into. Oh, except for I need I wanted to ask you, I was gonna text you, but I didn't know if you got a chance to catch it. Did you catch the Walking Dead episode with your boy Rick Grimes? Yes, sir. last episode. Yes, sir. Now let, let's 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 take our time for a second. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You tell me what you thought about it. Tell me what I thought about it. I thought they took him out like a G, but he's not dead. You he, think he? You think he should have stayed dead? I think he. No, I mean. I, I mean, do you think they should? They should have killed him. Is I guess my question. I mean, I don't think they should have killed him because I think what they did, they kind of played the fifty, because it's like. We want to go on the show without him, but just in case it doesn't work out, we're going to open it up to bring him back. <laughs> what you mean play the 50? You mean with power? ratings, with ratings. They're playing the 50 if the show can survive without Rick as the lead. Got you. Got and you. if it doesn't, they didn't necessarily kill him, so they can always add on to the story of where he went and bring him back into the fold. Okay. I will say this. I did watch, I don't know if you ever watched the show that comes on afterwards, Talking Dead. Yeah. And the producer said that they're going to set this up to have many, because, you know, the other show. It's been um, off talking, I mean, Fear the Walking Dead. Yeah, Fear the Walking Dead has been, has been I don't, and I don't even watch Fear the Walking Dead, but it's, it's hugely successful. Mm -hmm. And they said they want to have Rick Grimes have movies, like his own movies. Mm -hmm. Cause, you know, the actor himself, he really just wants to stop because he feels, he, he wants to spend more time with his kids. 
Mm-hmm. Because doing the series is hard. It's 12 hour days, you're away from your family, and he wanted to spend time with his kids. So he pretty much wanted to have that luxury of doing movies and things of that nature. But I think I, was like, I, I thought it was a smart way because I thought it'd be too easy just to kill Rick. You know what I mean? But I, I had a feeling he was going to go away, though. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, well, they told you last episode, but I knew it was going to be something where he was going to go away and and everybody was going to, like, I'm not going to say, like, I knew that he was gonna, they were going to think he's dead, but I knew it was going to be something where he was going to go away. Mm-hmm. I thought he was just going to say he's going to go away because him being there was going to be, like, too much friction. Mm-hmm. And so he's going to be like, you know what? It's best for me to leave. Y'all got this. Because every time I'm here, it makes everybody mad. I thought it was going to be something like that. But that whole episode was about him. He blew up the bridge. Yeah. And what was it? But I got a little confused by that because wasn't his whole purpose of going away because he didn't want to blow up the bridge? Because didn't do say, let's blow up, the, blow up the bridge earlier so they won't go in there? Did I yeah. miss something? Well, he didn't want the bridge because the bridge was a way to get to, to get to all the communities quicker. But he ended up blowing it up because it was so many walkers that they would have overwhelmed Hilltop. And so he did that to save the people at Hilltop. So he ended up coming back to the bridge and blowing it up anyway, even though Daryl was like, Daryl said in the beginning, let's blow up the bridge. And he was like, no. Okay. What was it like for you to see him going down memory lane? Oh, see all the people? Like, yeah, um, like his man. What's his man name? No, Sh- Maggie's father and um, Sean, Shane. Shane, 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 yeah. yeah. That's my man who played the Punisher, every though. time he had, to, he had to keep waking up and it was a walker in his face. Dude, that was scary. <laughs> That was He's scary. Like, you know what you got to do, Rick? You got to wake up. <laughs> yeah. You know who I you know who I wanted to see down memory lane? I wanted to see um he also saw the you know the the black woman. I can't remember her name. Um uh sheesh. Gee, I feel bad now I remember her name though. Uh, I forgot her name. Cuz she's too. on Star Trek, the new Star yeah, Trek I forgot series. Her name too. I, I can't remember her name, her name on the too. series, man. She's like Yeah, cuz it was Gabriel. It was uh yeah, I forgot her name. Yeah, I can't remember her name. But she was on there. She had a brother. He died too. And they all represented something. I think Gabriel represented, like the producer said, Gabriel represented wisdom. No, she represented wisdom. Mm. Gabriel represented like heart. Mm. Uh, and and Shane represented strength. Yeah, they everybody pushed Every, it along. Yeah. But you know who I wanted to see on the Lolo? I wanted to see an, a, a Rick Grant enemy. I wanted to see the governor show up mm. and be like, you pretty much meet you, you, you had remember Rick went through a period where he became the governor. Mm. Well, he was pretty much like, yeah, we know. Remember, that's how he got into the whole situation with Negan in the first place because they were big and bad. They were overconfident, mm. and they were just going to kill somebody. So I actually wanted to see the governor come back and kind of be like, so what's it like being me? You know? I wanted to see Glenn. Who was Glenn again? Remind me of that. Glenn is the oh, one, yeah, Maggie's yeah. husband. I ain't want to see Glenn. The baby's father. I ain't want to see Glenn. Negan smashed his head in. I ain't want to see Glenn. Yeah, I wanted to see Glenn. I, 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 I didn't, didn't see my man Glenn. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to see Glenn because Glenn would have been like, "Yo, why y'all ain't get this dude? Why y'all had this dude beat me with this bat?" You know what I'm saying? Like, why, why y'all had this dude whip me my my back? You just sat there and you ain't do nothing. You know what I mean? Let me, let me find out real quick, because um. But the next three episodes are gonna be, whew, with his daughter taking over now. Uh, his daughter put the hat on. I saw that. Her name was Judith. Her name was uh, Sasha. Oh, see, yeah, Sasha, Sasha, Sasha. Sasha. Sasha, that was in there. I had to look it up real quick. Yeah, but, but yeah, we, seeing Judith getting a little bit older, you know, looking like Rick and her brother. Because Rick said, the guy who played Rick said he wanted to lead the show last year. Mm-hmm. But he felt like he wanted to give the son, the actor, the son, his own space because, you know, he left. Mm-hmm. So he said he didn't want to have both of them die in the same season. He thought mm-hmm. that would be that'd be kind of unfair. He wanted to have give him some breathing room. But he said he didn't want to leave in on season finale. He wanted to leave in the middle so people can get used to, he said, because he he feels like the show can live without him, which I, I think so. But I agree with you. I think, like, if the show ratings were the tank, I think, honestly, they would make him, like, the, and, and let's say, like, his movie career don't pop up the way he want, like, the actor. They made it open. They gave yeah. him open to come back. Dude, shows are lasting longer and longer die, now. you die, you die. Yeah. You did. But they, like, saved him and took him away somewhere in a helicopter, so... We don't know what this other, it's kind of like this I am. This other world is. Yeah, this I am legend type thing. You remember the Will Smith movie, I yeah, am legend? Yeah, yeah, Where they sent it to the, they had a whole like congregation of people yeah. there on this colony. That's kind of made it seem like they were taking Rick to. So if the show don't work out and Rick stuff don't work out in real life, I mean, hey, there it is. Well, the thing that makes Walking Dead can be everlasting than any other shows like Game of Thrones, it's not purpose-driven. Like Game of Thrones has a goal that they're trying to achieve. Um, 
you name another show that everyone, you know, yeah. I guess Walking trying Dead, to watch. they're just trying to survive. Walking Dead, they're trying to survive. You know, so there is no such thing as like it can end mm-hmm. or they're going to find like a cure. Because if there was a chance for the cure, everything's dead. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like it, there's there's no power well, and stuff they like did that. Do, they, they are evolving the walkers now because now the walkers are talking they're thinking. See, I'm not going to spoil it for you because I read the comic book. So I'm going to let you hold on. I'm, I'm not going to respond to that. Okay, I'm, I don't read the comic book. So I read the comic book. So I know what storyline that is. Okay. I know what storyline that is. And what I want to tell you is you definitely going to watch, you definitely are going to want to watch that next storyline. It's going to suck that Rick on TV is not going to be involved, but there's a, I'm only going to say this to those who don't read the comic book, it's a war coming. Okay, of course. They need a war. They just, it's been like four episodes with peace. <laughs> well, this one is like you said, Judith is younger, so I guess like what four years have went past. Mm-hmm. I like the way I like it the fact that they let you know that years go past. Rick is definitely gone, gone. Like it's not gonna be no episodes with them like trying to figure out how they gonna live without Rick, mm-hmm. you know, crying and stuff like that. Like Rick is gone. Mm-hmm. Like you said, Judith been living on her own all these years now. Like Rick is gone, so I I, I do like that. So. It was good, man. It made me feel a certain type of way, but I was satisfied with it. And I guess you were satisfied with it. Yeah, it was a good show. Good, good, good. I, I wanted to get into that, man. Well, that about does it for us, man. We about to get up out of here. What you got going on, bro? Uh, mm-hmm. Keeping these records spinning, spending time with the family, keeping it moving. I'm actually going to rest because I think after this week, man, we might as well start getting ready for the holidays. It's going to be in full swing, like Thanksgiving, Christmas, and all that. So uh, my mom is actually going to come visit me soon. So this is like my last weekend of me being in the house by my total self. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to take that time. Since Howard home come and had me just on recovery mode, I'm going to take that time to kind of smell the flowers. Yeah, well, I said, Chill mom, out. Mom's coming in town for Thanksgiving? She's going to come in town, man, a few days before Thanksgiving, man. Feel free to come by, man, because she's going to cook, bro. Um, I was about to say, you kind of, y'all both, y'all can come up to the crib if you want to. You know, I ain't got no issue. You know, it's, it's the, it's the <clears throat> I don't have an issue. Coming to your crib, mm. it's the vehicle, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But you know what though? Um, actually, I I'm I am going to be taking my mom to some further places in DC. I would say for some for a reason, because uh, my mom is thinking about moving, mm-hmm. and so I can't do it in my you know my way. But I'm not going to be Ubering around, mm-hmm. so I'm definitely going to like rent a car. So that might work, bro. I, I you know I appreciate the invite because I know you could, this going to be your first Thanksgiving in the, in the big house, right? Yeah, in the new house. <laughs> the house, baby. So I'm, I'm going to see how that go, but I'm going to let you know like I let everybody else know, man. I appreciate the invite, but my mama cooking, I ain't going nowhere because I ain't had my mama cooking. And, so she can bring it on up. Uh, I'm just saying, I ain't, had, I ain't had my mama cooking since literally last year. Mm-hmm. So if I got to choose between coming to your house, because if I bring my mama to your house, my mama be like, oh, well, you know, you want to go to your friend's house, so I'm not going to cook. I'm like, what? No, she can cook too. She can bring a plate. She can bring a dish. I, bring I, a dish. I, 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 I hear you. But the way my mom's brain works, if I tell her ahead of time, she's taking off. She 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 gonna when my mama's off, she's off. <laughs> okay. But my mom feel like being nice and being like, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cook. I'm like, I gotta let her do that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna see how she feeling. I, I ain't gonna look, I ain't I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't gonna say nothing. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna see how she do it. But you know, if she do, I'm still gonna see you invite. You can still come afterwards, or I'll let you know if I'm coming. You know what I mean? So I appreciate it. And we appreciate you. As usual, make sure you thank you for checking us out. Make sure you check us out on all platforms. We are officially, officially, officially on Spotify now. So go to Spotify, look in the search engine, type in <laughs> hiphopmetricshow.com. <laughs> That's right. Hercules, Hercules. That's Hercules. right, Hercules, Hercules. And we are on iTunes. You know what I mean? Still as usual. Make sure you hit me up on my Twitter, at Radio. Make sure you follow this guy right here, at DJ Academics. Make sure you follow Hip Hop Matrix Show, at S 98 As usual, be blessed and successful. We'll talk to you soon. We ghost. It's the Hip Hop Matrix Show.